Okay, we are live. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. We've already said hello, so it's always funny to say hello again, but hello again. <laughs> and anyone watching, a hello to you or watching now or watching the replay. I'm live with uh, my lovely client, Elaine. So we've been working together for three-ish months, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, you've so graciously accepted to, to share your experience, which I always really appreciate on many levels. One, because I know it's an intimate part of one's life. And also because I feel like when a woman is ready to share, she's really, it's really a sign for me that she's kind of transmuted any pain or shame into like, wins and celebration and celebrating the growth versus feeling ashamed about any of it yeah like open to yeah anyone else so thank you thank you can we share a little bit with anyone who's watching like what was the motivation or like what prompted you to get in touch and say I want to work with the love coach I know that you were referred to me from someone amazing uh, yeah. but what was that motivation um, I had done a lot of coaching. I had done like a fitness coach. I had done a career coach, but this was like a piece of my life that I really wanted to work on. But it's also something where it's like, I ask friends for advice and everyone, it, it just, no one really takes that type of advice seriously to me, yeah. not necessarily as much as maybe like a career yeah. conversation. But I was like going on these dates and only things would only last like two months and then things would end. And I just like wanted to get out of that cycle. Yeah. Um, and like find something that, you know, was more long-term. Um, and I was like, I'm doing something, something has to change because I'm not um, breaking it. I felt like I was on a hamster wheel. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that way sometimes. I know that it is, it's an investment of your time. It's an investment of money. Um, there's a leap of faith that's yeah. needed when you're signing up to any kind of coaching. What, what were some of the things that you worried about before signing up? Because I know that there are fears around doing this kind of thing. Um, I feel like first, this was probably a little bit larger of an investment than I was used to. So yeah. um, that was probably one of the bigger ones. And I think also like, because I had already done some coaching and, you know, also worked with a therapist, like this is, I was nervous. It was going to be very similar to that work, which in some ways there are some overlaps, but it is really different when you start looking at it from a relationship perspective. Yeah. Uh, it's not just like the surface level triggers that I think sometimes you can, like you have to, I feel like with relationships, you go really deep because I mean, that's what comes out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And coaching is different than therapy. And I remember you still saying, um, why has my therapist never brought this up? <laughs> different I think I always I think you think a therapist will go do this stuff but not always yeah um so yeah that's what you need and what were like what were some of your intentions around our work together what were you hoping to get out of it um I was really hoping to break that cycle um I I originally thought I was going to do a lot of work of like how I show up on dates and who I'm meeting and like editing things out and working on like apps and stuff I, I mean of course I learned that it was way more internal than that it was like almost had nothing to do with other people yeah <laughs> um that I mean that was what I was hoping to fix yeah cool I love it and and what have been uh some of your biggest breakthrough moments yeah, I feel like I had so many, but the first one I had is I had just like a really rough conversation with a friend, um, just a text exchange that went just like horribly wrong, um, just spiraled. And I think I learned, I learned two things. One is like, sometimes I'll approach situations with this like idea of almost taking energy from someone. Yeah. Um, I think other people might explain it like you're, you're hoping for validation or security from someone. And I think it's really important to when you do see those things to just like, you need to like go for a walk or you need to like journal or meditate because those feelings are more like inner child feelings and you can't put that on other people. No one's going to respond how you want them to respond necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like if an exchange does get really heated, like I remember in maybe my younger twenties, I would have these like huge blow up fights with my friends. And now I'm like, that will never happen again. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to just say that you need to walk away. Yeah. 
and sit on something and like your friends should understand or your relationship should understand. Yeah. So that was like a huge, just like, um, not letting things get to the point where you're just, it's way past the boundary. Yes. And I remember being really proud of you in that because I kept pushing you to go deeper and every time, like, and you know, I could feel like we were dancing around, like making sure you didn't, I didn't trigger any unsafety in you, (laughs) but still like, pushing you to go a little further like what else is here for you because I know it's easy to blame and look at what that other person didn't do and they surely had their faults in it right but like but what's here for you because this relationship is relatively low stake so right. you need to learn from it and and apply it so that like when when we're talking about the relationships that feel higher stake in the romantic relationships you've got the gold mine of what you've learned here yeah yeah for sure and what are some of the things you know as much as you're open to sharing that you learned about yourself whatever you're willing to share um I think when I get into a, maybe a disagreement or a fight with someone my tendency is like we're gonna stay up all night and fix this we're gonna like I want to like just engage with that person um And also like I would, the anxiety would be so bad. It might bother me for like a week. There were times when I just like wouldn't even sleep. Um, And I think I've just learned how to manage that. Like you could say it's like more towards like a secure attachment style, like where you're just, you're not, you're not putting all, it's not like your world's crashing down just because you had a disagreement with somebody. Yeah. Um, Where you can just take a step back and know and trust that like, they have positive intent towards you. And so do you, and you have, you know, vice versa. So like, we'll fix this. Like we've been friends for maybe 10 years or we've been, you know, they've shown me no reason that they're not going to support me. Yes. Um, And I think that was like my biggest learning of myself is that like, you can't expect people to do that. Um, And it's really not helpful. Yes. I love that you brought up like the anxiety piece and then feeling secure because so I, I also get women coming to me who have more avoidant or both an anxious and avoidant mix. Uh, there's a lot of anxious attachment that comes up in this work. And so what I'm hearing you say is like, knowing that and moving through that and finding calm within yourself, rather than needing the other person to make you feel calm. Right, a hundred percent. I think also I do want to add that I've learned is that like a lot of times when I've been in relationships, I get this fear of like, is this the right person? Am I with the right person? And I I think through work with you, I've learned a lot about how is that more like inner child stuff that I'm just scared that this isn't the right person or is this truly not the right person? Because normally when it's truly not the right person, you end that stuff pretty quick. Like you don't just sit there (laughs) and wait. You're not wondering, like you just got to know. Um, so being able to separate, like some of those maybe more intrusive thoughts that just like are natural fears that are going to come up and if you should trust them or if they're really not, yeah. um, coming from a good place. And that's big work. Yeah. And I mean, I'm still working on it, but I think you start to learn as you go. Yeah. And, and that, that also brings in some of the conversations we had around spark too. Right. And like, yes it not needing to feel like an immediate burst for it to be a green light. So I feel like that was actually huge because I would go, I mean, I was going on like 10, 15 dates and I just didn't, I was like, there's no spark. There's nothing there. As you get older, finding that spark is actually really hard too. Cause I just think like you're maybe excited about less things. Um, I just felt like it was just so few and far between problem is, is like when I would feel that spark, like, I almost had like no control in the relationship. It was like, it was like a lot of anxiety. Now, when I think about it, like I never would want to go back there. Yeah. Because the butterflies and that spark is just like, I'm like, when are they going to text me? You start overthinking so many things. Um, and what you're really looking for is just this trust. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the excitement will come with time once you like maybe get to know them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it yes how has this work that we've done actually impacted other relationships as well so like beyond just like your romantic life yeah it it actually really impacted my friendships like I said just like 
taking steps back if there's disagreements, um, things like that. And work was huge. Um, if, you know, I was frustrated at something, sometimes you just got to wait before you send an email, take a walk, I'm like, don't get too upset. Um, everyone's just doing their job. Um, I think just that reminder um, to not lead with your emotions all the time. <laughs> yeah. okay to feel those things though. Like you can yeah. feel it and like take a walk and then respond. Yeah, I love it. Yes, so good. And I know that you weren't expecting to meet someone while we were working together, <laughs> but you have. Yeah. How is that going? Um, it's been so good. It's just so easy. I don't think I've been in a relationship like this that's so easy and fluid and there's just really no worries. I mean, it's really new. Um, but I feel like we haven't gotten in any huge fights or anything, but I feel like if anything were to come up, like we're so comfortable talking with each other that it wouldn't end maybe like how some of my other ones have. Yeah. And if, if I'm not mistaken, you've committed to each other, like you're- Yeah, we're in a, yep, mm-hmm. Yeah. We yeah. <laughs> officially. <laughs> yeah, so good. And how how is this experience different from past experiences? I think, and I've told you like how uncomfortable this like power dynamic of just like, it's actually equal. Like I have to say as equally as he does. Um, and I think at first, like you had to tell me multiple times, like there's no such thing as risk, risk free dating on, on my end, of course, but on his too, like, you know, like it's okay that someday I wake up and I'm like, wait, like something's off. I don't know if we can get past this. And we talk us through and it ends, like that might happen. I'm not saying it like, I'm not saying it's something that like any of us are thinking about, but of course it could hurt. Like that's part of this. Mm -hmm. It is. And I think that's a really important message for anybody watching. Um, like sometimes there's this tendency to want to avoid even like we, we want to avoid getting hurt and we want to avoid hurting someone else sometimes too. Mm -hmm. And the truth is it, it's, it's always a possibility. Yeah. You yeah. can't predict the future at all. I mean, and you don't know that person at their core yet. So it's okay. Yeah. That yeah. You something and, and you guys can't get past it. Yes. Oh, I love that. What's been your favorite part about being supported? So by me, right? During this, like navigating a new relationship and moving through, like before the new relationship, moving through some of your own things. Like what's, how has it been for you to have that support? Oh, man, it is so nice to go on a date and be able to talk to someone about it <laughs> um, or like have a fight and have someone there to talk to you. That, that's not going to kind of give you a biased point of view to support you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it's gonna really make it something for you to learn and grow from um or if it's like just a situation like to forget about like this is like you know what I mean like that just wasn't a good day it's okay yeah um, I think that's support I think also like you've seen me like get just like even really defensive with you and you were so good about just like call me <laughs> like mm -hmm. we're helping me work through that um when I couldn't see your side yet yeah. Yeah. And I, I, what I love too was watching as we progress when you would ask me something and be like, I knew that was the answer. <laughs> like, okay. So you get to just trust yourself, right. right? Like you get, you get to just trust yourself from this point. And for anyone watching who's not familiar with my process, like I provide quite a bit of support in between sessions because I think there's so much, especially when it comes to navigating like your your existing relationship or dating or meeting someone like there are so many subtleties and nuances and opportunities to grow in between sessions and I love to be there is there anything else you'd like to add you know if someone's watching this and maybe wanting to do the work but scared of doing the work mm -hmm. um I think going back to my fear of like if there is anything that you just kind of don't need to work on or it's not like something yet that like you maybe you've already worked on it, like you'll tailor it. Like I'm sure even in the group settings that I didn't, I didn't necessarily do that, but like, you'll make sure that you're like each client's getting what they need. So if it's not as much trigger work, but it's a lot, well, it's kind of intertwined, but like, if it's more inner child work, which is what I needed, like you'll focus on that and make sure that's like the majority of it. So right. it's kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of impossible not to get out of it what you need because you're there to like, 
um, see where where that person might need some more support. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. Anybody watching, feel free to drop your questions below. And uh, yeah, again, I always appreciate when a woman is willing to come on here and just share what's true because it inspires for others what's possible for them, whether they end up working with a coach for me or not. It's like it still paints the picture of that you came in with, you know, like an anxious attachment, which so many so many women do and you really like I always say like can you catch the rays of the secure attachment <laughs> and you're you've really been catching the rays and those yes. are not there and working through that and coming back to security so I appreciate it in you so much thank you thank you we'll say bye to everyone but I'll invite you to stay on okay bye everyone <laughs>